Hi everyone, my name is Rick and I welcome you back to my channel. If you are new to my channel, my channel is basically about Hoyas and how I incorporate them into my tropical backyard and I also grow orchids and uh, aeroids. So there's a bunch of plants in my yard and uh, every week I talk about them. I talk about mostly the Hoyas but I also touch on the aeroids and the orchids. So uh, today also I'm going to talk about some AH Hoyas that I got in the mail. And I'm gonna briefly talk about some of the pest control that I do here um, in the garden. So please stick around, I hope you enjoy it. So today is Sunday, Mother's Day, and I wanna wish uh, every single mom a very happy uh, Mother's Day. And uh, my mom lives in Portugal, so I'll be calling her for a long chat after this video today. Uh, so today I'm gonna to walk around and I'm gonna show you quite a bit of seed pods and there's actually um, I looked around this morning there's still a bunch of bloom hoya blooms that are still open so let me just um, go around and show you a few things so yeah the uh, 1015 EBC 1015 is blooming again it just blooms like if you watch my videos this guy over here blooms like every uh, every other week it puts out a new um, new set of blooms on that those peduncles and it has four peduncles so it just keeps on alternating and blooming uh, it's here getting about four hours of uh, direct sun a, uh, a day so that's a little bit for a little bit much for a Hoya but I'm kind of just testing uh, different things and how light uh, affects the um, blooming and it. apparently if you give it a lot of light and you don't burn the Hoya it does encourage uh, is to bloom so and over here I want to show you the seed pod on this uh, Hoya EPC 620 cross that I did with uh, RHM uh, 2053 as you can see it's one of the thicker seed pods they tend to be longer um, and thinner but this one is actually pretty thick so and this one is uh, about six weeks so um, I'm going to bag it um, so that when it opens up, it's probably going to take another couple weeks to, that's my prediction, a couple weeks for it to open up. And the seeds, when it opens up, the seeds go flying everywhere. So you kind of have to use um, uh, organza bag, which I have here. And I got these uh, big ones. I had smaller ones, but some of the seed pods were too long. Uh, so I decided to get like this. <laughs> These are kind of a little bit too big, but they should be okay. So I usually cover the seed pod completely and then um, bring it over the peduncle and then tie the, just pull the string. It's kind of hard to do it with a phone in your hand, but you get the gist and here it is. So in a week or two, maybe three, when the seed pod opens, uh, they'll be caught in here. And uh, you should plant them within 10 days for it's ideally you should plant them pretty soon right after they open. But I find that up to like 15 days, they, they do pretty well at uh, sprouting. Um, so that is a seed pod on the, that Hoya is a 620, like I said before. And then um, I did this cross with a Rigida and this is AH Hoya here. This really big uh, waffly leaf on this AH733. And um, I crossed about uh, all, the, all the flowers on that umbo and only two made it and here they are. These are about, I would say about three weeks along. So um, yeah, when they get to be, you know, six seven weeks then i'll put a bag on them as well they grow pretty fast past this stage so they should be at least twice the size next week on that one and uh this one over here on this iml uh 18 six uh, i'm sorry 1886 which is uh which david little sent to me as an affinis bicolor and um the color on this hoya is quite exquisite as you can see, let me see if I can get a better focus on it. So these flowers are about a couple of days from closing, but they're uh, the contrast um, 
on the Corolla is quite uh, quite beautiful. And if you notice, I did uh, hybridize this again with uh, EPC 605, which is uh, Hoya Rigida. Has very large leaves and really nice veining. So, I th and has pink flowers. So that would be nice if the centers of those Corollas were in pink. And I thought a nice veiny leaf on this would be uh, quite attractive. So that's what's going on here. And uh, these seed pods are probably, again, two, three weeks uh, old. So they, they have a while before I bag them. Now these over here are really close to opening. Probably another week. I'm, I check every day and they should be open soon. Um, they start to, uh, the color starts getting a little whiter when um, they're about to um, to open up. So, that the, and that's what I've noticed on this seed pod here. So today you'll notice that you won't see Swiffer uh, in this video and it's because I have the chickens out. They come out into the yard and they just love uh, bugging, they love taking, finding worms and finding any bugs that they find in the garden and they eat uh, them. So that's one of my pest control mechanisms. And uh, I have a lot of little lizards everywhere. Uh, let me see if I can find one. Um, that is a very good pest control. They eat all kinds of small bugs. See, usually there's a few of them hanging up there, but not today. Oh, there's one. See the lizards, they uh, hang around the plant, they actually sleep on them, and they eat uh, anything that moves, basically. Um, the other problem I have sometimes, and it's not very often, is aphids. Aphids are little, um, little plump, um, yellow, sticky, gooey um, pests, and they kind of like the new growth, and they kind of like suck. Um, the juice out of the weave, out of the new growth. So to deal with that, I just put a few drops of neem oil and a couple of drops of soap in a squirt bottle. And that usually does the trick to uh, get rid of um, the aphids. Um, like I said, there's not much, uh, I think a lot of it is natural pest control. Um, so there's not much I have to deal with in the backyard. Sometimes I do uh, see a mealy bug, but that's also uh, pretty easy. A lot of times they go away with uh, some neem oil. You spray them a couple of times. And if it's pretty bad, then I just bring the plant into isolation and I give it some um, systemic and I keep that um, plant isolated until the infection has gone away. So here it is, a Hoya Patrarallii uh, 029, and it just opened today, I just noticed. And it's pretty cool looking. Uh, the leaves can get pretty, pretty big. As you can see, that's a pretty good size leaf. Let's see if I can get a better look on that flower. So yeah, basically that's my uh, pest control. And then I use, like I said, I use the um, um, the systemic to uh, get rid of uh, anything that's major. And I isolate the plant because I have a lot of, uh, as you can see, a lot of pets. I have the cats, I have the chickens. I love the wizards and I like the light, wildlife in the yard. And I do not want to introduce any pesticides uh, into the garden whatsoever. So, uh, yeah, I want to show you this bloom over here. Uh, this is a Micro Bernardo uh, cross that I received, and it is a Cagaensis uh, with Mendrensis. And as you can see, it's not the most exciting uh, flower. You would think that with those parents, you would get uh, a better looking uh, flower. But what I did is I self-crossed it, and here are the seed pods on that. So maybe sometimes when you self-cross um, a hybrid, it'll bring out more of the characteristics of one of the other parents. So um, that's what I'm doing there, and hopefully the Mendorensis red would come out 
um, in the next generation. And there is an RV Dick, I think it's I, uh, APC 196. And the plant did not survive the winter too well. I mean, it survived, but it took a hit this winter, so it's not looking too good. But it's putting out a lot of new growth and, um, and it's blooming. So that's the flower for the RV Dick. And I want to show you a couple of Susan's hybrids. It's um, Joelle. It's, I forget the parents, but I think it's Albovada. It has some Albovada carnosa. Don't know exactly, but this plant has two really nice peduncles. And uh, this is David's Green Cup. Again, I think it's an Albovada crossed with. Um, Carnosa, but this is a really, really old flower. I think these flowers are at least 12 days. So uh, this is on its way out, but it's still beautiful. I, that's a very long lasting uh, Hoya bloom. And uh, my bloom highlight uh, this week was this Kalopenbergii uh, long leaf. And what excites me about this uh, bloom is the, long, the length of the peduncle. It's really, really long. And the flowers uh, are pretty, pretty good uh, size as well. And they are very unique. Let me see if I can get a close up. So yeah, this is a very unusual um, Hoya there. And the leaf, the leaves on, on the, the leaf on this Hoya is very, very thick, very cardboard-like um, when mature. These leaves are really pretty stiff too, so it's a, a really interesting Hoya. Like I said, the peduncle, that color is unusual, and, um, and the uh, peduncle itself is really, really stunning. So yeah, that's about it for the garden walk. And I'm going to um, show you some Hoyas up on that pedestal. And uh, this Hoya I received from Thailand as a Hoya cross of Jennifer, uh, Joy and Jennifer. And as you can see, it's really a really gorgeous Hoya. The leaves are uh, really nicely veined. They have a nice dark edge to it. The green when it comes in is really, really striking. I like the everything, the aspect of this Hoya very much. So, um, and it is also the same parents as a uh, Palm Siam uh, Ruby, a Hoya that's been uh, a cultivar uh, that's been named. So I really don't know if this is the same, uh, if this came from the same seed pod uh, or another, um, hybridizer uh, did the same cross of these two. I do notice a little bit of a difference between um, Palm Siam Ruby and this one. I don't have the other one here. It's at my uh, other greenhouse to show you a side-by-side -side comparison, but maybe I should do that uh, next time. And I wanted to show you also this uh, Sarawak, uh, this Latifolia from Sarawak. And you can see the leaves are really, really super nice and pretty big. I think they'll get bigger than this, but uh, as you can see, this plant is not too old and it's already putting out these really gorgeous, big, thick leaves. Um, so yeah, Latifolia from Sarawak. It's a relatively easy grower for me. I have it growing actually in a mix of uh it's called we can buy here at the store i don't know if uh, other people in the in the country can get it it's a bromeliad mix um that's at, uh, you can get it at home depot or lowe's and i mix that with coarse perlite and it makes a really good um growing media for me here in florida for these hoyas that hang outside uh and get rained on so um, you want a really nice uh loose mix that the water flows right through uh, for uh, and that's really important for outdoor growers because we can't control the amount of rainfall so 
So these Hoyas, like I said, were received about three days ago. Um, they actually only took uh, five days in the mail from Thailand. And as you can see, this is an AH Hoya. Uh, this one is six, I'm sorry, 262. And uh, it looks like it has some nice wavy form to the leaf. Uh, the leaves are probably gonna get a lot bigger than this and they're pretty big already. Uh, so I'm excited. I don't know much about the parentage or anything else about this Hoya because sometimes I contact the seller and I tell the seller to send me a mystery box and they send me uh, stuff that they have um, uh, that they think that I might like. So, and I'm usually pleased with that. So um, instead of giving them a list of stuff that I need, I just tell them to send me a box of plants and they usually are pretty good about sending really nice stuff. So yeah, this is uh, uh, 262 and um, I'll keep you updated and see uh, how it develops and when it flowers, I'll definitely share that. And I'm uh, really excited about this one because A, it's a really good size uh, plant and it looks like it should bloom soon. It has a lot of uh, vine, which is good. So it'll put out new leaves on that and hopefully this uh, summer I'll get blooms. And this is AH75. And I, I write another tag and I keep the original tag in there as well. Because a lot of times these um, go flying and sometimes I even write on the side of the pot. But this is an interesting, it does have some, um, it looks like it could have some erythrina in it because of the uh, form of the leaves. Um, but yeah, it's a total surprise. I didn't know what I was getting and I don't know what the flowers look like. But I'm thinking that in... Um, you know, probably a couple of months, I'll have flowers on it that I'll be able to share with you guys. So this is AH75. Again, uh, AH sent me a really nice size plant. Uh, this one has really, really nice, pretty thick leaves, nice dark edge. These leaves are probably like seven, eight inches long already. Um, the older leaf has some uh, nice wave to it. It's pretty, pretty massive nice dark edge again uh, yeah it's in my mix of uh, uh, the bromeliad mix with the perlite and uh, hopefully this will bloom this summer so uh, there's a possibility it's putting out a nice vine there so yeah AH25 and I'm really intrigued from uh, uh, with this species from uh, Vietnam. It's uh, AH005 species Vietnam. So I have no idea what the flowers are going to look like, but I do like these leaves. They have a little bit of splash. And a lot of the Vietnam uh, Hoyas have like a really nice green, like unique blue green color to them, which I really like. And you can see it's a really, really pretty leaf. Um, on this Hoya. So this is uh, Species Vietnam AH005. Maybe next year I'll get uh, some flowers on this. And uh, this one is, uh, let's see. It's a Philosonia uh, contrast vein. So I love my Finlissoniae and any variation on the pattern of the veining is a reason for me to get one. So when she told me that there was one with high contrast vein, that attracted me. So I got uh, this one. It may get more contrast if you, uh, as it matures, but it's a, actually a very, very nice leaf. And I uh, can't wait to grow it out and see how it develops into uh, a mature plant and this guy is a Hoya globulosa from China and this is also from AH Hoya so all the Hoyas I've been showing the last few Hoyas have been from AH 
and the tag says globules from China and I just want to show you how gorgeous these leaves are and how big they can get I don't know if you can it's kind of hard to tell on camera but some of these leaves this globulus leaf is quite stunning it has a nice ruffled edge to it it's a little bit fuzzy in the back especially the newer growth but as you can see I like the growth pattern it just they kind of just hang down you can't even see the pot from uh, this Hoya globulosa from China really excited um, these Hoyas uh, globulosa velosa, all the Hoyas in this group, are usually higher altitude, cooler uh, weather, which makes it difficult for me to bloom, if not impossible, here in Florida. But the good thing is that the foliage itself is worth growing these, um, these Hoyas. Uh, and I think even people up in the northern climates here in the United States um, are not um, able to bloom this Hoya very much. So yeah, so the leaves, like I said, really take, steal the show on this, on this plant. And this is AH300. Uh, this one I actually have had for probably about a month. And I think I've showed it uh, on a previous video, but I wanted to show you uh, the update on some newer growth. You can see it's a very attractive a veiny leaf that has a nice point to it. Uh, it's more rounder than a lot of the Fenway type Hoyas. And um, it's a little top heavy, so. And, and it does get a little bit of splash, so I'm wondering if it has some Hoyadechiae in it. Uh, but it's quite a really attractive uh, foliage plant, and it seems very easy to grow. And uh, that is going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please leave a comment below. Let me know how I can improve. Uh, please like and subscribe and come back every Sunday when I upload a new video. I appreciate the support and I hope you all have a wonderful Mother's Day and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.